What is labor? Who will answer? It's the active force. It's the workforce. Okay. And what is included in labor? Ma'am, labor is the human labor. efforts. Human yeah, efforts. Is, only human all efforts. Human efforts. Okay. Whether it is mental or physical, all human efforts are included. And what is not included? Animals. The animals. Yeah, animals are not included in labor. And what else is there? The efforts which are done for in return of a remuneration. Okay, not your parents doing it or you are doing it for free, doing social work. These are not included in labor. Okay, only those work which is done in an undertaken in expectation of a reward are con uh, considered to be labor. Okay. We had done the classification of labor. Any problem in this? No. no? Okay. No, now, no, when no. you are doing classification, when you are learning about this, you are going to learn the differences also. Okay. Examples, you should be very clear what comes under skilled, what comes under unskilled, what comes under semi skilled. Okay. And you will do a difference also. Now, first question you write down because I have not done this. Today's homework question, difference between labor and land. Okay, three or two or three differences are I think given in your uh, book. Other than that, also there are two, three differences. Tomorrow I will discuss with you. Today you will do it. Okay, point wise only you have to write, make two columns, labor and land. Okay, difference between labor and land. Written? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so let's start. We have finished till here. Did we do characteristics of labor? No, we can oh, have no, no. So no, we'll no. start with characteristics of labor. Okay, first is labor is perishable. Yes, labor dies. He cannot store his work and keep the way we keep uh, store. We can we can keep land for some time. We can store other goods, but labor is perishable. He has to sell his labor. Today only at the ongoing rate. Okay, he cannot wait. Ki today I will not work. I will wait tomorrow only may, when the wages are better. Okay, he cannot store his labor and keep. He has to do the physical labor today only. If he doesn't sell it, somebody else will do it for you. Him. Okay. Then he is an active factor of production that I had already told you when we were doing the classification. Yes, without it, there can be no production. He only has to engage land. He only has to use the capital that is the tools and all the machines that are provided he without him nothing can be produced he cannot be separated from labor this i have already told you in perishable also that he cannot store his labor and keep it for tomorrow okay labor comes with labor they are not separable okay like capital it can be separated somebody else is manufacturing the machine and you can buy it from him and use it in your industry but labor and laborer cannot be separated right he sells his labor not himself he can do it he may not agree to work if it is it does not suit him at all he can do that it is his wish okay labor is mobile land is not mobile we have to uh, learn this it's fixed you cannot move land from here and there but labor is mobile if he does not get proper wage and he thinks that somewhere else he can get a proper wage, he can move there. Okay, people do move interstate also and inter countries also. Okay, just because of this only. All labors they differ in efficiency. The way land also differs in its fertility, labor also differs in its efficiency. What is efficiency? The ability to do something. Do the work. How much? Yes, the work, the capacity. Of his work how much he can do right that also differs from labor to labor some labor can be uh, skilled he can be educated while other labors especially the construction workers they are not skilled they have experience but they are not skilled they are not educated so they differ in their efficiency efficiency will take up ahead also he can improve his efficiency by investing in capital on education, training, productivity can be increased. Yes, if you provide proper education facilities to him, if you provide proper training to him, his efficiency can be increased. Yes or no? 
Yes, yes, he will get to know better ways of doing the same work in less time. In elasticity of supply. What is the meaning of in elasticity of supply? What is in elasticity? You have done elastic and in elastic supply in nine. No, you have not done no, in elastic. No. Elastic and in elastic means it can be increased or decreased according to your will. Okay. Now, in elasticity of supply of labor means you cannot increase or decrease it as per your wish in a day, month, or year. Why not? Because they are humans, right? What workforce is available to you at a particular point of time cannot be increased. Children take time to grow, yes or no? Yes. To join the workforce, children take time to grow, right? Yes. So you cannot suddenly, as per your wish, increase or decrease the already available labor. What is available to you at this point of time cannot be suddenly changed. And that is why it is said that it is inelastic supply. The way land is also inelastic. What land is fixed in your country, you cannot increase or decrease it. Okay, so land is also inelastic and supply of labor is also inelastic. Now demand is derived. What is the meaning of derived demand? Anything which is derived means it is dependent on something else. Okay, so how is demand for labor derived? You have done demand and supply in ninth. No, Meaning of demand and supply you have not done? No, ma'am. Okay, no, what is demand? Just short, I'll tell you. Demand is something which is available to you at a particular price. Okay at a particular point of time okay suppose you need sugar which is available to you today at 20 kgs at 20 rupees per kg okay and you are there to buy it at 20 rupees per kg so your demand for sugar is met with the available price simple terms this is demand okay so demand for labor is derived that means it depends on demand for other goods this simply means that whatever production is happening in the economy, suppose production of cycles is happening. If there is no demand for cycles in the economy, the labor which is engaged in that industry, will there be demand for them? No. no there will be no demand for them, right? This is the meaning of demand is derived for labor. Okay. Construction industry. Since now everything is shut down, there is no Mama, construction. Mama. Yes. Ma'am, uh, in demand is derived, uh, as per the demand changes, the, labor, yes. the number of labor is also changed, no? Number of labor will not change. Labor supply is fixed for that particular time. Okay. It can happen that if, suppose we have 100 labors in the construction industry. Now there is no demand for labor. Yes, because everything is shut down. There is no construction happening. So there is no demand. Mm -hmm. What will happen is tomorrow if this lockup if, if government says that now you can do, you can go about your work. Construction industries all over will start their construction. At this okay. point, we have only hundred laborers available, right? These hundred laborers have to go to ten construction sites. This time, the demand increases for them, right? And it can, it is possible that all the places cannot have as much construction labor available to them as they want. Okay, clear. Not to that places will increase, not the number of labor. Number of labors places. for a particular time period will not increase. Number of okay. labors remain fixed for that particular time period. Remember that there is a time period constraint in that. Okay. After a few years, when children grow up, that labor increases, right? The workforce increases. But at today or in this year, your labor force will not increase. Okay. It is always okay. a particular time period. Oh. Okay. Okay. Next point. This point is clear. Yes. Mom. Uh, Mom, will the demand of labor increase now or decrease? Demand. See, labor is fixed. But as soon as this lockdown is finishes, all construction industries will start. All manufacturing will start. So whoever are already employed will join. Yes. And suddenly the demand of things are going to go up. Yes or no? Because for such yes, a long yes. time, everything is shut. So yes, it is going to imp increase for a short time period till everything comes into a balance again. Economy is again balanced. We learn this about balance demand supply in the next chapter. Okay. Yes. Muskan and Divyata, your uh, video is not on.
No, ma'am. Why? Ma'am, there's some problem. I don't know. Vivita, what happened? Ma'am, but I can see you all. Okay, you can see and you can see the PPT also? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now, next point is, this point is clear to all? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma okay. Ma now, less bargaining power. I have already told you what he has, his skills he has to sell today only. Yes, he can have a choice that he might decide that no, this is too low, low for me. I will not. But laborers in India are very poor. They work on daily wages. Yes, daily, day to day, they have to earn their living. What they earn today, they spend today only. So in that case, for a country like India, which is a developing country, which has lot more of labor force than any other developed country, their bargaining power is less. Okay. They have to work at whatever available wages they get. Okay. That is why they have a very less bargaining power. Uh, and this happens because one labor is perishable. I told you he cannot store his labor. He is generally poor. So definitely he doesn't have a bargaining power. And there is no lack of, there is a lack of organization between them, right? These unskilled laborers, they are not organized laborers. There is no uh, what union for them. Right. For everybody else, a little uh, more organized. There is an organization. There is a union for all. Even factories have unions. But these unorganized laborers don't have. That is why they have a very... Yes? Who is it? Ma'am, Arya. Ah, yes, Arya. Ma'am, but uh, like labor, they have that labor union, no? Yes, labor unions they have in factories. Not these construction workers and all. They don't have. They are unorganized oh. sector. That is why they are known as unorganized sector. There is no organization for them. And they are mostly mobile laborers. Right? Most of them come from their villages when agriculture is not happening. And then when agriculture starts happening, they go back to it. So there is no an organization for them. Okay? Which can bargain on their effect. On their behalf. And they are uneducated. So they don't even know. So whatever is available to them, they take part in that. Okay? Clear? Characteristics are clear? Ma'am, I have a doubt in, in, yes. in elasticity. Yes, what is it? Uh, Ma'am, uh, the time period is fixed or uh, it can change also? When we are talking in economy, mostly about anything, we speak, it in speak about it in terms of time period. Right? Right okay. now we are learning about production. Production will also be in time period. In this year, yes. in previous year. Right? It's always time bound. So when we talk Mom, about so it, it changes. Yes, it, it changes, changes with time. Yes, it changes time. with time. See, your labor force is perishable, right? So suppose I have a yes. hundred laborers force today in this year. Some of them will die because they are old or because of some disease, something happening, okay. right? And new workforce will come in. Yes, because yes. Uh, children, they will become adult. So it keeps on changing. So always when we are talking about economy, we are always talking about it in terms of time period. Okay. Okay. Clear? We'll go ahead now? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. Okay. Now, importance of labor. Why is labor important? First, very important thing. It is a factor of production. Yes, it is labor which utilizes all the natural resources without labor. We cannot use land. Land means everything, upper crust and all the natural resources that are available with it. Okay. He is a source of consumption or demand. What is consumption? Ma'am, the goods mm -hmm. which are produced, he consumes them like if yes. there is labor. labor yes, it is the labor force. Labor force means all, not only the unorganized sector, also the, the skilled, semi-skilled and the unskilled, all of them. Labor is the one who produces and he is the one who becomes the consumer and consumes it also. Yes, someone in a factory is producing a fridge. Yes or no? Right, but yes. I am also counted in labor. I buy that yes. fridge. Yes, so that is why it is said labor is the person who is producing also and he is the one who is Consuming also. So whatever demand for whatever goods is there in the economy is produced by these laborers only. Okay. And more your consumption is, Muskan, your mic is also off. More your consumption, more your demand will be. Yes or no? Yes. Yes. More you consume, 
more you demand for that particular sub, uh, thing in the economy. Now, labor is the source of wealth. What is wealth? Wealth you have done in nine? Yes. What is wealth? Yes. Capital. Only capital? Ma'am, the yes. money invested. That the is capital. Essence. Wealth is whatever is produced in an economy, which has some utility, which satisfies your wants. Yes, all three things come in wealth. The production, yes. the it, it should satisfy your want and it should have some utility. Yes. And it so, should also be transferable. And it should also be transferable. Yes. So labor is the source of wealth. Since he is the one who is producing everything, he is the source of wealth. Yes? Yes? And that is why labor is considered after land. It is the most important active factor of production. Okay, now wherever I write FOP, it is factor of production. Okay? Okay, ma'am. Okay, in, uh, in higher studies also, where you will find these short abbreviations for these things. FOP, everywhere it is factor of production. Okay? This is clear importance of labor. Yes. Okay, now we come to efficiency of labor. Efficiency of anything will be what? Capacity. It's capacity, how much he can produce or how much he can work. My efficiency is how much I can work in a day. Yes? Yes? So labor also, labor's efficiency is... Uh, counted in terms of his productive capacity. How much he can produce during a given period of time. Yes, I told you in economics time is very important. Always everything is considered in a given period of time. Okay, so today if a laborer in a cycle factory can produce one laborer can produce three cycles in a day. Entire compi compilation can be done. So his efficiency is three cycles per day. Okay. So, productive capacity of labor during a given period of time is known as efficiency of labor. If you uh, think in terms of cultivation, how much land can he cultivate in a day will be the efficiency of that labor on that day. Yes? Yes or no? Yes? yes. So, yes. efficiency of labor, it has three aspects. Quantity of output, how much he can produce, quality of the product, what he is producing, it's quality, right? He can do it. He can lower the quality. Instead of 50, he can produce 100. Yes? So his efficiency has not increased. He has just lowered the quality of the product. Yes or no? Yes. yes? So quantity of the output, quality of the product, and the time he takes to produce that much. That is counted in efficiency of labor. Okay? Right? And a labor is considered more efficient if he can produce more quantity, better quality in less time. Right? How can he do that? By, by, by machines. Yes. By uh, introducing new technology, technology, he can increase his quality also, quantity also, and in less time. Yes or no? Yes. Yes? yes this is clear efficiency of labor yes 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 so efficiency of labor in itself is a question of two marks right uh, explain efficiency of labor and what are the factors that affect efficiency of labor i think it has come in one of your board exam questions also okay so your next question becomes explain efficiency of labor and factors affecting efficiency of labor that we are going to discuss now written down the question Yes. yes, this is your next homework. Okay. Now, what are the factors that affect efficiency of labor? First factor is racial and hereditary qualities. What is the meaning of this? Ma'am, racial means like uh, which race or something he belongs to, like sometimes some race, like yes. In some uh, races, like some classes, they are only potter, so like pottery the efficiency will be very nice. Yes, yes. These are the hereditary and racial qualities. Some people like in Kashmir, they are very good at embroidery. Yes, Kashmir embroidery is known world over. So they pass it yes. on to their children. Generations. Okay, so there it affects the 
quality of the product now if i go or if you go and start doing embroidery that place it will affect because we have not done it since we were small children so we don't need, we don't know the nitty gritties of it but since they are born in that they know it as soon as they grew up they were children they were seeing this so they know right so they know how to efficiently work with that particular skill okay climate yes ma'am how does climate affect the efficiency of labor ma'am for example uh, there is a uh, like they are producing something on wood like in the north like something from himachal pradesh they are uh, producing uh, a small art wood artifact out of pine but suddenly if there is a climate change then the uh, like the pine trees and all they won't grow properly so their production will also grow down go down yes but that is quality of wood factor climate affects efficiency of labor that way also that is indirect directly it will affect in hot climates it is uh, the laborers cannot work for more like abhi its summer season started right Because after 10 o'clock yes it is very exhausting after 10 o'clock you cannot go out right so workers also yes. have this inability they cannot work too much if it is hot climate that is that is why in uh, winter seasons or in countries which have a colder climate the workers can work more right okay yes or no the physical yes, labor that they can do that can yes, be more in winter nations rather than in hot climates so in india we have a hot climate so our efficiency of labor because of climate reduces okay education and training i have already explained to you if you invest in the education and training of laborers their efficiency increases right now education can be general education general education will help them broaden their knowledge make them more make them more responsible like if you are educated you will have more moral values you will know that no this much work i have to do this is my work i have to finish this much work in this time yes so your moral qualities increases technical education is he can be trained for a specialized job yes so he will increase his knowledge base for that particular job so education and training also affect the efficiency of labor in india it is a problem because we have a lot of unskilled labor force no education no technical education right you have done this in uh, indian economy in nine problems of indian economy yes experience experience also helps in efficiency of labor if a new laborer comes in he doesn't have the experience but an experienced laborer will know how to cut short this work and produce a more effective Thing. yes or no experience will teach him that yes working yes, conditions what is the meaning of working conditions ma'am like if uh, he, he has a uh, like uh, like how is his surroundings yes, yes his surroundings what uh, facilities he is given at his workplace right nowadays uh, the mncs and all they provide you with recreational facilities you have good canteen facilities free of course which gives you healthy food yes so all these things if are made available to him he is happy and if a person is happy his efficiency is better okay he gets proper sleep time gets proper food to eat gets proper income yes level of wages same thing if he has proper income he can in invest in his food in his health yes so it increases his efficiency but level of wages in india are very low no. that is why it affects the efficiency of labor in india duration of work same a person cannot work for more than 6 to 8 hours if he is working more than that his efficiency obviously decreases because he is tired and when you are tired you cannot produce that much work yes or no yes your efficiency also reduces if you have to study the entire day Yes. 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 Okay. Then machinery and equipment. Machinery and if you give him more modern tools, which take less time. Uh, for example, in cultivation, if he is still using bullocks and carts, he is not able to do that much work. If he uses tractors and modern equipment, yes, he will be able to cultivate that one hectare in less time 
if he is using modern machinery and tools and better quality and better quality yes if he is given better seeds better fertilizers he can produce better quality of crops yes moral qualities moral quality means that if he is educated if he is truthful if he is hard working he will produce more because he would want to do that yes his efficiency will increase but for a lazy person he is not going to do that okay clear moral qualities yeah, organization yes. organization is that uh, institution which brings, which i didn't hear you what it is interrelated yes it is interrelated organization is that institution which brings land labor capital together yes so if that organization is efficient it can timely provide the laborer with raw material with machinery with capital proper investment everything is properly given to them on time his efficiency increases if you delay 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 things then his efficiency also decreases okay then last is employ yes no ma'am i will ask later ni ask ma'am actually i wanted to ask that in the board exams do we have to write word to word from the no. book or no you don't have to exam? write word to word but you should be able to cover maximum points yes that is why we tell you to write notes yes write it point wise and according to the marks if they are oh. asking now i have given you what 10 or 11 points in this all 11 points they are not going to ask yes they might ask five points they might ask six points depending on the question and the number uh, number which is allotted to it marks which are allotted to that question you have to answer that ma'am yes okay. ma'am is it okay if we first show you the uh, chapter number 1 notes and then you tell us how to uh, do it that will be lot of work that will be lot of work for you also that will be lot of work for me also first you finish with the notes and then you start doing the questions as in when you finish with no now you have finished with land you finish the notes of land you do questions on land so it gives you a better learning into it okay you will remember it better you finish first you will, will wait for finishing uh, that i finish the chapter this is a long chapter yes and then you will do the questions you will forget by the time you reach enterprise you will forget land and capital okay that's why i told you to do simultaneously okay right um, how many points for a two marker uh if they have not mentioned that two to three points that's okay it. okay uh, okay we have done organization employer and employee employee relation that is also the same as the organization employer is a organization who is employing that employee so relation between them <coughs> if it is good relation the laborer will want to work more for the organization yes if the organization is taking care of him taking care of his needs giving him leave whenever it is required not telling him to work more than the prescribed hours they understand then the laborer will also increase his efficiency will what want to do work for them okay these points are clear factors affecting efficiency of labor Yes. Yes. Okay. Let's proceed to the next one. Any problem till here? No, 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 no. Now, causes of low efficiency in India. We have discussed some of them. Yes. First is your climate. It's very hot in India, so your efficiency as such decreases. Low wages because the standard of living is low. The uh, laborers are very poor. They are poorly fed. They are physically and mentally not fit. All this. comes under because there are low wages in india the workforce is more work is not that much right so the employers have a better bargaining power than the employees understood yes, employers have a better yes, bargaining power because uh, than the employees so they have low wages and these low wages affect their standard of living they, they are poorly fed they are not healthy yes physically and mentally they are not fit and therefore their efficiency is low in congenial environment that means i have already told you if the organization provides them with these thing proper hygienic conditions a candy uh, a canteen a proper canteen which gives them healthy food at a low rate or free of cost and relaxation techniques and all which the mncs have now started employing but our unorganized sector does not have do you see at construction sites people having these uh, 
amenities no they don't have these workers don't have yes so the efficiency is low in india poor technology we are not technology intensive we are labor intensive country migratory character what is migratory character the mig like the laborers are moving from yes. one place to another the laborers move from one place to another second thing our uh, economy is a agricultural economy so most of these laborers are employed in the agriculture sector they move to cities when agriculture is not happening right after the rainy season when harvesting is finished there is a period of two or three months when there is no work on the farms yes in these hot months there is no work in the farms at this time these labor force will move into the cities to find jobs now when that finishes when the rainy season comes again they move back to their places so they have a migratory character and this also determines their efficiency yes education and training we have already discussed the our unorganized structure uh, unorganized uh, sector is not that educated and they are not trained right that also uh, lowers their efficiency okay how can you improve the efficiency provide all this to them it will improve their efficiency yes yes, yes or no give them a proper yes, incentive yes. proper and timely bonus to be given improved working conditions social security measures that is provident fund pension if you give them all these things they feel that their future is secured and if their future is secured their family's future is secured they will produce more they will be more efficient okay hours of work should not be more than 8 hours because more than that no person can work efficiently yes and technical education yes. should be provided from time to time right the better technology which is coming in they should be provided with that education so that they can increase their efficiency clear to all yes, yes ma'am okay okay now this is a very important topic that is division of labor now before i start with division of labor tell me what do you understand by division of labor and do you mm. yourself use this concept division of labor mom mom division of labor is like classification or separation of labor okay classification of labor so we have done skilled unskilled hey, unskilled uh, mom separation separation of labor yes mom division of labor is so that the labor like in certain like some labor is uh, like he has studied a lot so he can be put there so the efficiency of the whole workforce can be improvised by classifying them yes give me an example of how you use this division of labor do you use division of labor no yeah. how do you use this mam you have done group projects the educated and uneducated mm no you have done group projects in class yes ma'am yes one group gets a project to be done so what do you do all of you do all of the work each student is allotted one work yes each student according to his abilities is a, a given a work yes among 10 yes. students if two students are very good at drawing what do you tell you prepare the chart yes the drawing part yes. of the chart one child is very good very tech savvy you tell him to do what go and serve the internet get the information on this yes one or two children are very good at modeling so you tell them to do the modeling make the model related to that project so you also use this division of labor according to the efficiency of a person according to the skills of a person yes or no Yes. yes yes and is it beneficial to you yes, yes ma'am ma yes it is beneficial because a person who is skilled in that particular job will do that particular job better than the next person yes or no yes yes, yes so this is basically what is division of labor that means it is specialization in a particular work yes so the definition as given by adam smith division of labor is defined as a system whereby the operations necessary to make a finished product are so minutely divided that each worker performs one work or at the most only a few operations okay 
Is it clear to all that this yes. definition is given by Adam Smith and you will learn it word to word. Okay. So underline this in your uh, book. Division of labor is defined as a system whereby the operations necessary to make a finished product are so minutely divided that each worker, worker performs one or at the most only a few operations. Okay. That means, suppose we take an example of car industry. Okay. Now, one car is not completely manufactured by one laborer only. The car manufacturing yeah. of car is divided into parts. Yes. And every part is made by or manufactured by one set. Yes. Some set of laborers are producing the machinery that goes into the car. Some are working on the model of the car. Only the do door, only the uh, body of the car. Yes. Some are working on painting the car. Yes or no? Yes. So the work in the car industry is divided. Okay. Now there are types of division of labor. Division of labor is very important. And I think I have seen it in most of the uh, papers. It is asked one way or other. Okay. So you will pay more attention to division of labor. Now division of labor has three types. Simple, complex and territorial division. Okay. We'll take it one by one. Division of labor is clear to all? Yes. Any question in this? No, ma'am. Okay. Now, first is your simple or product based division of labor. Okay. This is the simplest. This. this is based on production. Okay. A person specializes in the production of a particular commodity or a service. Okay. Now, I've given you four examples in this a mechanic, right? He specializes in what? Car mechanism, suppose. A mechanic specializes in car, he can see only cars. Or if it is a washing machine specialist, he will see only washing machines. Okay. A doctor, he specializes in diseases, nothing else, only diseases. And in doctors also, there are specialization. Yes. There is a yes. cardiac doctor, there is a neurosurgeon, there is a skin doctor. So they all specialize in their field. Other fields are not concerned with them. They only specialize in their field. Cashier who sits at the bank, he specializes in taking and giving money and keeping in all the record of that. Yes. And then we have a farmer who specializes in whatever he is producing or cultivating in his field. Yes. Yes or no. So these, this is the simple division of labor product based. Okay. Second is your process based or complex division of labor. Now, this complex division of labor, is, this is like I gave you the example of car. Car industry I gave you. One car is produced by many laborers, right? It is divided into small, small processes. And in the end, all these processes are brought together to make a finished good or make a car. Yes, the example that I have taken here is building of a house. Okay, the first phase of building of a house is designing the house. How you are going to make this? So the designers come in, the architects come in, who design the house for you. Okay, this is how, whatever your requirement is, you want a two-bedroom house or you want a three-bedroom house, you want a lawn, you want space to be left or you don't want space to be left, you want underground, whatever is your requirement, they first design it accordingly, right? Then your construction starts. That's, so you have a person who monitors that construction work. Yes? Start from the uh, groundwork, the foundation to the end. He will be monitoring, right? Transportation is another department which brings in all the supplies that are required from steel to cement to sand, everything what is required in the construction of a building. The transport department will take care of that. Yes. yes then the laborers coming who actually construct it. The laborers, the carpenters, the electricians will be there. Right? They will be doing all the work outside and inside of the house. And then finally is decorating with you. Paint the house the way you want to do it. Yes? So this is, yes? Ma'am, in the constructing part, the laborers will actually come and make it. Uh, like, uh, they are unskilled laborers, right? 
so but some skill they need right like uh, unskilled laborers will be those laborers which are working with uh, bricks and all yes okay the carpenters the uh, they are not unskilled they are semi skilled laborers okay ma'am yes so all three and then there will be people who will be supervising them who will be telling them what to do and how to do it they will be the skill laborers who are proficient in their own profession yes okay yes yes clear yes, so this process based division of labor is clear to all yes yes any question in that no ma'am okay now third year yes a uh, ma'am in complex division uh, many workers work together to do one product yes then in a simple only one uh, person uh, does work to produce one or many work not necessarily this is just a division of labor based on different things simple is just a product based they are completing one product now a cashier in a bank is one single cashier only or maybe two cashiers might be there yes they okay. are not required more than that depends on the work base what you are producing okay. in a car industry in a construction industry you cannot have a simple division of labor can you have one person yeah. cannot produce the entire thing yes so it depends on the product that is being produced okay this is clear now the third is your complex division now complex division what we were doing this is not the third one this one only this what we were doing is further divided into complete process incomplete process horizontal and vertical division okay in this you just have to learn the difference between these okay or you can be given some work and you have to say whether it is a complete process incomplete process or it can be divided as horizontal or vertical okay Now complete Ma process. Ma'am, but some incomplete process example is car. I am just coming to that. I am explaining. Complete process is where the division of labor happens, but each process in which it is divided produces a complete thing. Okay. For example, we take the cloth industry. It starts from where the cloth industry. What will be the first input? What will be the cotton let's say yes the raw material that comes in would be cotton so the first work that is done is plucking of cotton and then converting it into thread yes so yes. the first product that comes out of it is thread which is complete in itself a thread can be used for manufacturing cloth a thread can be as such also sold yes or no yes yes so a thread is a complete product what will be the next step in it if we are to make cloth out of it it goes to whom yeah, putting it in a loom yes it goes to the weavers yes yeah. who will put yeah. that cloth yeah. who will use that thread to manufacture cloth now a cloth has been manufactured that is also a complete product yeah. either it goes to a factory to be made into something a garment yeah. or it goes as such to the shops to be sold loose yes or no yes, yes so cloth yes. is also a complete product and when this cloth is manufactured it then goes into the factory right so from the factory sorry different types of garments are made a shirt a skirt anything a dress anything trousers anything can be made out of it right so a complete products come out of that place also yes or no yes. this is a complete yes. process division right in yes, which each of the organization gives you a completed product okay incomplete processes what you said suppose a car when a car is being manufactured it is divided into small 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 processes but each process when it comes out with something in itself is not complete unless you put it in that car or in some vehicle yes a spark plug produced by some one division unless you use that spark plug in the machinery it is of no use yes it's not a complete product it has to be used with something else for it to be beneficial yes or no yes yes, yes so that yes ma'am so in this complete process uh, 
मैम कंप्लीट प्रोसेस में इट कैन बी कैप्टन प्रोसेसिंग फर्दर अंटिल अ फाइनल स्टेज एंड इनकंप्लीट में इट इज ऑन द फाइनल स्टेज समथिंग लाइक दैट यस फाइनल स्टेज समथिंग कम्स आउट व्हिच कैन बी यूज्ड नाउ a final product in complete process whatever you are getting in each process you can use it for further production or you can use it as a consumer good also yes or no yes yes, yes. that is the difference between complete and incomplete yes horizontal and vertical is horizontal different parts of the processes run simultaneously in this also we have taken an example of car that means till the time a complete car is produced all the different processes that are happening are running simultaneously it is not that first they will make the body of the car and then one by one they will start fitting the things in it all the things are manufactured simultaneously and together then they are bought to make a finished product that is a car okay so horizontal is that which all the processes are run one after the simultaneous at the same time all the processes are running okay vertical is where successes stages are there in this also we can take the textile industry only yes to make a shirt you have the you have to go through all the stages yes without thread you cannot make a shirt without the cloth being complete you cannot make the shirt and without that cloth being cut as in the form of a shirt and then stitched it cannot be made so in vertical all the stages they are working they have to finish one product then only they can go into the next stage yes so horizontal and vertical are clear to you yes, from the same oh. as complete and incomplete it's just the way it is divided clear yes ma'am yes now it's 9:50 you have next class at 10 so we'll uh, call this a day okay i have given you two questions to do today you will go through this entire till here complex division and if you have problem then you will ask me tomorrow okay